Thank you very much for first the organization of this super nice meeting. Um, it's a great pleasure to be here and present my work. And it's sort of similar topic. I'm going to talk about the beginning of life, but animal life when we are born. And I'm interested in morphogenesis and how animals are formed during the process of embryogenesis in general. So when we think about the biology, uh, one of the extremely interesting questions that is there is how a very complex organism can be formed from just one cell, the fertilized egg. And in fact, most of the rearrangements that happen, maybe I can try to make it, no, okay, sorry. Uh, one of the, ooh, okay, so one of the key um, uh, processes that occur um, during the process of embryogenesis is the formation of the four, of the complex organs and tissues, and this is called morphogenesis. And we can think about this very similar to origami, where epithelial sheets are folded or reorganized in order to give rise to um, actual organs, like, for example, our, fa uh, our skin or our lungs. And um, in comparison to origami, all of this ca has to happen without any ingeration from the outside. So there are no forces that happen and can fold tissues. So it all has to be really regulated by gene expression, protein dynamics, and changes in the activity of proteins. And this all creates forces that reshape the tissues um, and letting us acquire our form. So um, in fact, this is something that is even more complex. And when we think about this, it is not really known how the forces and proteins and gene expression are regulated during the process of organogenesis. And as I said before, um, it is epithelial sheets that rearrange during the process of morphogenesis. And epithelial cells give rise during the development to different kinds of cells. Like for example, our skin, which is important as a barrier function, um, they give rise to secreting cells, um, like for example, glands, or even more complex um, cells like photoreceptor cells in our retina that allows us to see or perceive the light and, and structures. And in order to play those different functions, they have very special architecture. So they have to be polarized. And here you can see an example, um, cartoon and an epithelium from Drosophila, where we see that the plasma membrane of all the epithelial cells is divided into different domains, apical and basolateral, and those different domains have totally different proteins present there very often. And this is important for proper localization of also other proteins like junctions that keep the cells tied together, giving also this barrier function. And it's not only the outside, but also the inside that is polarized. And here, very important, I depicted, it's the cytoskeleton that plays an important role if in distribution of different proteins. And also, during morphogenesis, it provides the force to remodel the tissues. And important for us, it is that once this polarity is established, it has to be maintained. Um, throughout the morphogenesis. And this is quite an interesting question, how, how this is possible. So we know that one of the proteins that is extremely necessary for, uh, to maintain polarity is CRAMS. And it is a transmembrane protein that you can see here in blue, highly conserved from basically all the animals, from mam uh, worms to us. And when this protein is not present, what we see is that the polarity is lost, the connections between the cells are also falling apart, and the whole tissue breaks apart as, as well. However, when we have too much of this protein, what happens is 
as you can see also in this cartoon, is that um, the, the, the morphology of the tissue is as well affected. So we see either overgrowth of the tissue or multi-layering of the epithelium. And that tells us that this protein is really crucial for the proper morphology of the tissue um, in all the animals, basically. Uh, so we can also observe this in the fact that when Cramp's protein is not there, we affect development. Uh, any dysregulation amount of Cramp's protein is present in cancers and also leads to degeneration of the retina and then blindness in humans. So that was the motivation for us to really look at how this protein is regulated in the physiological situation during morphogenesis, when there is a, lo a lot of remodeling of the tissue. And that was the state, basically, of art when I came joined the lab, um, where I am right now. So we used Drosophila embryo to look at embryogenesis. And the reason for that is that the whole development is very fast. It takes only 24 hours. And we can look at different processes, like um, highly dynamic morphogenetic events that happen during the first 12 hours in development. So here you can see very early stage when there is really a lot of movement of the tissue. And we can compare this with much later stages when there is no more rearrangement of the tissue. And in this kind of settings, what we wanted to do is to look at what happens to Cramp's protein in the tissue that rearranges a lot and compare this with the situation when the epidermis is very stable and has to really keep its form. So the way we do this um, is not by only using genetic modifications, but we really want to look at dynamics of the protein. And for this, we tagged Cramp's protein, and we used a fluorescence approach, which is called FRAP. Uh, so fluorescence recovery after photo bleaching. And in this, this essay, what we do is we use a very strong laser power to bleach just a subset of molecules, as you see in this middle picture. And that leads to a decrease in fluorescence signal. And then we can observe different processes like diffusion of the protein or active transport or follow breed dynamics of binding and unbinding of this protein in order to know something about reactions and regulation of the protein. So here, it is an example of, the, of such an assay where we see the epidermis um, and the bleaching process. So what you can maybe see a bit better on this picture, it is a chymograph. After, so you can see that the signal is really decreased uh, when we bleach and it recovers. That means that the protein is being moved. And that allows us to compare the dynamics of this protein uh, between different stages in, and also different activity of the epidermis. And what we observed was that um, during the embryogenesis, there is a very interesting trend. So the mobility of Cramp's protein is the highest in the early embryo, which you can see here in this blue line, when there is a lot of remodeling that occurs. And this mobility decreases as development proceeds. And in the tissues, post-embryonic tissues, like in this case, I have examples from the salivary glands, from the larvae, we see that the protein is highly immobile. So we were very much interested in in the embryo, and what happens in the embryo that we see this decrease in the kinetics and also level of recovery. So we know that CRAMS is a transmembrane protein, and this is just, just a schematic of what we know about mem membrane proteins. So one of the reasons why we can observe the recovery can be just a simple diffusion at the membrane, but can be also something more complex, like different rate of biosynthesis and the transport, or recycling of the protein from any other area, basically. And I will just summarize quite some studies that we already made. So we know that it's not the diffusion uh, that can contribute to the differences that we see. We know also that it's not the biosynthesis rate, since it's much slower than what we observe. And we also know that it's the recycling that changes between the stages and also um, epithelial transitions that we look at. So the question was how 
the recycling of the protein can be differently regulated. And one thing that changes when we look at the very early stage and compare this with the later developmental processes is the activity of the, of the tissue. So it is much higher earlier on. And we know that the remodeling that happens is driven by actomyosin, which forms this cortex just below the membrane. So what we wanted to do was to block actomyosin activity using an inhibitor and look what happens to Kramp's protein. So here you can see an example of yeah, FRAP experiment um, with the control on top and the drug uh, that inhibits contractility. And we see that as in no any other experiment, there is basically no recovery at all. So that tells us that this contractility is important to maintain dynamic pull of the protein. And when we look at the tissue, what you can see is that whereas in the, what we can see is that the cells are, st are still there, but the protein is really depleted very fast. So it's just after 15 minutes of, of the experiment. And that really tells us that this uh, dynamics of the protein is maintained by the active rearrangements of the tissue. So then we did a bit different experiment. What we wanted to do was to prevent interaction of our protein with the cortex and see what happens then. And what we observed was that at the late stage, when there is really no remodeling of the tissue, and also we don't see this dynamics of the protein, we very much increased it uh, in comparison to the, wild, uh, to the wild control in blue. And interesting was what we observed at the tissue level. So when we look at the developing embryo, in the normal control situation, we see that the morphogenesis happens quite nicely. So we see epidermis that moves to the top in order to create this zipper, so closing the present hole in the, in the tissue. And this is a very normal situation. In the, in the mutants that cannot bind to the cortex and therefore be properly regulated, what we see that this process is basically disorganized, embryos are dying, and what we see at the level of epidermis is that it creates holes and, and, and the whole morphogenesis is really affected. Um, so with this, we prove that, in fact, this interaction is important at all the stages, early and late on during morphogenesis. And just to sum up what I, what I showed you is that we know that during morphogenesis there are different levels of activity and there are those stages when there's a lot of remodeling. And in fact, this requires high regulation at the cellular level. And most likely this is not the only protein that is regulated in such a way um, that is very dynamically maintained. And later on in development, the proteins, in this case, our protein has to really decrease its mobility in order to provide this stable tissue organization and, and, and let's say physiology. And this is all then regulated. And we don't know yet how, in fact, by some, some sort of regulation through the force that is really generated by those cells. And this is just a message that I wanted to convey is that during morphogenetic transitions in the embryo, uh, cells have to, each and every cell basically has to coordinate not only the force that it generates, but also what happens at the protein level. And with this, I want to just acknowledge all the people that helped me so my lab, allowing me to work on this project and all the facilities that we have in MVI that helps us with imaging or taking care of our animals. And special, especially I wanted to say thank you to um, our ex lab mate from Sheffield right now, Natalia, who taught me how to perform FRAP experiments. And yes, and thank you for letting me talk about my project. Thank you.